continuing in my Casting Cork series, I'm going to talk about something fairly simple, but also very important, and that is the laying of the hook and how I do that. Last time I talked about how you pick a hook and the quality of the hooks and the cheap hooks that I like to use. Now I'm going to show you how I actually cut the cork to put the hooks in. So it's very important because it results in a, in a popper that either spins when you cast it or it doesn't. So this is important. So the first tip I have for you is that all these corks have a grain to them. And it's hard to see in the camera without a macro lens, but they all have a way that the, the grain goes. And this particular one, it's this way. You want to cut along that grain when you cut the channel for the hook. So when you do this, because it prevents the popper from falling apart. So if you're cutting across the grain, you know, if it's turned like this, you know, now this is going this way. If you go this way, you're, it just makes it fall apart more easily. So I like to do it with the grain. I always start from the head. So from the big, the big oval, I can see that the grain is going this way. You can see this line right here. This is the grain of the hook or the popper, excuse me, the grain of the popper. Uh, I always kind of eyeball where the center of the popper is. So let me move this away so I can actually see it for a second. And it's approximately, let me go with the grain, right there. And what I'll do is I will make myself a little pilot cut. So that is not actually perfect. That's good. Okay, so now I have my little pilot cut. And now what I'll do is I, I have done all kinds of things with this. I have made jigs with cardboard and I've um, done measuring and I've drawn and everything. But really, honestly, it, it just works fine if you go by eye as long as you're being careful. So this is approximately, that is a good cut. Just do a simple, small, non-deep cut at first. Lay the hook on it and see if it's going to be straight. So now I'm gonna look at it and say, okay, is that straight? This one is not. I can see right away that this one is not straight. Can you see that this is, this is crooked? It's going right to left. So it's going from this side to this side. So I want to bring the cut, whoops, jeez. I wanna bring the cut this way. Okay, so that's much, much better. Actually, that's, that's great. So, so I just made another cut along this way and I'm straightened it up. So that's, that's, that's important step number one. So you can see this is pretty straight. Might be hard to see a little bit with the camera, but. So the next part that's more important though, and this is a great illustration is, see how crooked the hook twist is? So like this is very twisted this way, right? Make sure that's zoomed in here. So this is twisted this way. We want to make sure that the hook point is perfectly straight with the popper. So that one's, that's pretty good. Because what happens is if this is turned like this, it ends up being like a keel and this will twist. Um, and that will twist your line and it becomes a nightmare very quickly and ruins your tippet and it's just a nightmare. So that's even more important than the straight cut of the popper, going down the popper. What's interesting is, no matter if it's expensive or cheap or whatever it is, the eye is not always straight to the bend of the hook, which is really interesting, and I never would have ever known had I not uh, been doing this. This one's actually pretty good. This is an eagle claw hook. It's pretty good. Uh, so I actually ignore the eye of the hook, and I look just at the point. So this point is what you want to worry about because it's what actually causes the spinning. So now I'm not looking at the camera. That's, so that's really good. So I really like that. That's, that's pretty much as straight as it's going to get. The next thing to worry about is how the popper is going to lay in the water. So this is the surface of the water. This popper is going to point like this. The hook is pointing down a little bit too much. So see the shank. So because this is going to float in the water like this roughly. You can see the shank is pointed down. So we want what we want is the backside to be sunk up in a little bit more. So I'll take this out. So if that's like that, you can see there's plenty of hook pointing past the lip, the nose of the thing, the popper, the thing. Uh, we want the shank of the hook to be sunk plenty far down into the actual cork, 
Uh, this one could actually probably be a bit more because what happens is that just helps with the durability. So we can sink that even further. The further you cut in the head though, often the further, the lot further you have to cut into the tail just because of the shape of them. So you don't want to go too far because you can split them right in half, which I've definitely also done. Like this. Again, make sure that this is properly set up like that. So this is nice and straight, straight down the thing. The thing, straight down the popper, wow, thing. We want the axis of the hook to be identical to the cork, which you can see it is right now. The last step is very simple. Get our super glue. You could definitely use epoxy. Yes, it's better, but this is a lot faster and cheaper. Uh, and we just fill the channel with some super glue. And you want to make sure it drips right down in there, that it gets right down inside the channel. It doesn't take very much though. Uh, a tube of this super glue will last you like two to three, maybe even four dozen, depending. And so that's perfect. So now you can see this is going to sit in the water, you know, like this, and the hook is pl pointing plenty down. And even if it's like this, the cork is, or the hook, even if it sits like this in the water, the, the point is still pointing in a direction that would hook the fish. We've got plenty of shank showing that we can tie our feathers to. Uh, and that's it. So that's as simple as it is.